All right, Willard, thank you. Pittsburgh, you know, was once considered the world's workshop, but as this uh, glimmering skyline behind me can evidence, the image of the city is slowly fading. So while the old smokestacks may be disappearing, the city remains very much in touch with its past, something that's clear to anyone who takes a ride aboard the Port Authority's 54C. For just a buck, you can wind your way through some of this city's most picturesque streets. The route starts near the Strip, where Pittsburghers from both high society and no society come to haggle over prices at open-air markets. There's the South Side, along the heart of the city, where the neighborhoods have been home to generations of immigrants for 100 years. And the 54C goes past the old warehouses and factories where industrialists like Westinghouse and Carnegie forged their fortunes. All told, it's a tangled travel route that captures the many moods of Pittsburgh. And perhaps the best guide for a more complete tour of the city is Frank Toker, who's explored the streets and the folklore for a book he wrote called Pittsburgh, an Urban Portrait. These neighborhoods in Pittsburgh have a, an amazing vitality. I think that's because there's usually a preponderant ethnic group. Uh, there's usually a, a very special topography. It's the top of a hill or it's nestled in one of the gullies, somehow separated from the rest of the city. And normally there are two great monuments that, that figuratively and literally tower over everything else, but generally uh, some impressive factory or installation where people work. And there's always the great parish church, almost like the, the, these are the two poles around which life revolves, and absolutely it did. This is Oakland, and it was an area that I regard as a kind of refounding of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh by 1900 was incredibly rich and incredibly filthy. It was a kind of national scandal, and uh, the city had gotten so bad that uh, sociologists, people like Lincoln Steffens, coming here in 1903, called it hell with the lid off. It was really a textbook case of a city that had, that had decayed uh, with um, incredibly bad working conditions. The robber barons who ran the city, Carnegie, Westinghouse, Frick, uh, Heinz, and, and a whole series of steel millionaires, didn't do much about those uh, bad working conditions. Instead, they made a cosmetic new city. Carnegie put his museum and library here. Uh, the Mellons put the Mellon Institute and then built the Cathedral of Learning for the University of Pittsburgh. So it was a kind of a joint effort. On the other hand, of course, it was a big propaganda effort. They're all working, in effect, to show each other off. And that worked to the benefit of the city. It's an incredible uh, combination of buildings. It basically looks like a, a world's fair that somehow was never torn down. The Birmingham Bridge over the Monongahela links Oakland and the South Side. The South Side's a real favorite area of mine. It's dominated by the huge Jones and Lachlan mill, now part of LTV, and effectively closed now. These mills were really shoehorned into the Monongahela Valley. There were a total of 17 of them, so close together, so enormous in their output, that they literally smoldered by day and glowed by night as a tremendous beacon. Actually, pilots flying from New York to Chicago used the steel mills of the Monongahela Valley as their main uh, or major navigational guide. There's such a passionate attachment of Pittsburgh people to their uh, neighborhoods and to the city. There's just a great love of Pittsburgh, a, a sense that I've just never experienced anywhere of uh, how the city works together. Uh, in this area, there's a, a strong mythology, too. Down at the base of the river are the mills. The middle ground is occupied by the, the workers, often with fantastic uh, steps getting leading up to their houses. And finally, at the top, the whole thing gets a, a sort of uh, mythic completion because the brow or the crown of many of these hills is held by cemeteries. And it's almost as though the workers who have given their lives to the mills and the communities here at last have an eternal rest like kings looking over the whole of the Great Valley. 
speaking of neighborhoods, we are truly in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, so Jane's going to be speaking with him in just a moment. 44 past the hour, we'll be back to Pittsburgh. Right after these messages.